It needs a horn. It needs a horn. What does it need to sound like? <laughs> Put a train horn in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's about what a beetle horn sounds like. I don't know why they sound like that, but they do. <laughs> Train horn would be mighty hard to fit. Uh, I think one of my neighbors has one. He enjoys scaring the crap out of people. <laughs> it's not impossible, but it's not easy to make one fit. I suppose you could put it in the trunk area and cut some more pieces out of the hood. But no one would I expect wouldn't, that I wouldn't out of a tiny little that. beetle. No, no, no they wouldn't. Like the little backfiring thing that I do with Ruby. That's what that should be. What should be? This third switch should be oh, the backfire. Oh, make it the backfire switch? Yeah. It could. I could wire it to the ignition so that way you could turn it on and off. <laughs> but it mean it needs a... Needs a me me. Me me. Well, I could turn it into that too, so it just stays on. Ah! <laughs> Driving down the road. <laughs> yeah, just leave it on. No problem. Oh, God. But... I don't know, that being the oil pressure light just really made me happy. Yeah, that was really smart. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a clever trick thing to do on there. I like it. And this is supposed to light up too, but it doesn't. Couldn't figure it out. Hmm. Everything on it is hooked up properly. It appears it's an LED. I tried reversing the polarity, nothing seemed to work. So, it just doesn't do anything. I just said nope. Yep, that's pretty much it. <laughs> nope, nope. Rob. All right. well, that's it. Yeah. This is Rob's car. Rob's car. Freaking Rob. Rob. <laughs> Power Boop. off. Boop. Well, these screw right off. What'd you call me? You heard me. Call me a screw off. Oh, they do. Go we'll play on my knobs. <laughs> Believe this? Look at that. Oh my god. Like those 90s infomercials. I can't hold all of my things. Oh, I no. think they're attacking you. Uh, like a B-list horror movie. Oh, no, they're getting you. You can't oh, stop them. Oh, you no. can't stop them. Oh, they're, they're, oh, oh, no. Uh. Oh, no. Oh, you're dying. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. <laughs> Up under here. Look at how many less wires we have. We only have those ones that I've added with the relay that's under there and everything else is stock and factory. And that's the goal. Try to put everything back like it was originally with only that wire panel to be uh, essentially an adapter to everything else. But <laughs> there's so many less wires, it's incredible. All that came out of this car. And this is the stuff I cut a lot of pieces out of it to reuse things, to patch things that were missing. And I still have that mess. Just that is an I need to finish mess. up with these wires down here. These are for the headlights. Clearly they're just twisted together for the moment, but I will solder shrink wrap and take care of that stuff. But here we go. Hey, welcome back everybody. Just wanted to let you know this is actually supposed to be part four. The engine start video was part five. Due to a loss of some video clips, I couldn't finish this video in time, so I had to release them as scheduled. <laughs> so if anybody's wondering why things look like there's a little bit of lack of continuity or things don't make sense, uh, that's the reason why. Probably most of you won't even notice. Thanks so much for watching. Off you go. All right, last I remember we gutted all the wiring in this thing and then we pulled out all the extra junk. Anything that wasn't attached to anything, anything that was just a damn nightmare, just is all out, is now leftover scrap and we're gonna see about using it as pieces whenever we need a little extra. I got all the headlights hooked up last I recall and they were working, but we did not have a switch to attach them to because the stock headlight switch, which actually is right there, is kind of kind of beat to hell, needs a lot of love, so we're not going to be using that guy. We're going to be putting in just a standard switch. Now I know those have like eight or nine pins on them or something, it's just a a Volkswagen nightmare, but what it is, the switch actually has multiple switches in it. There's a high beam, there's a low beam, there's the uh, running lights, and a whole bunch of other things that are associated with that for each of the circuits, circuits that turns on for it. And in this case, we're going to really simplify this. We're going to run things off of single switches, and we're going to get this thing hooked up into the stock wiring harness, which is still present. It just happens to... um have all the wires cut off. Wherever it goes into a switch, it's cut. Wherever it goes into a light, it's cut off. 
So we're just gonna reconnect back to those things because the wiring harness looks like it's good. Now we're gonna go about replacing all the blown out fuses because the fuse box is just <laughs> spray painted over by probably some kind of an American muscle car guy that had no idea what the hell he was doing because this is a Volkswagen and Volkswagens are different. Anyway, let's go ahead and hop to it here. Hey, welcome back everybody to Duckman Cycles Feet Up the Garage. I'm your host, The Duck Man. <laughs> and we're back today with the 1972 Volksrod Super Beetle Total Nightmare. <laughs> if you remember, and I'm trying to remember myself, um, I'm actually about three videos backlogged on this thing. I've just had so much going on that by the time I'm recording this, I actually have recorded two other videos that I haven't even uploaded yet. But I'm still fighting with the electrical on this thing. And what we've got is a replacement for this because it was missing some switches and it turned out that the starter switch here was just falling apart. Uh, trying to find these parts turned out to be kind of on the expensive side, so no. Instead, we picked up a replacement panel. I found them on Amazon for about $25 and it just, uh, each switch was roughly, you know, five to $10 each. The start button, I couldn't even find a good one and I wanted one that had the light on in it. And uh, this has all the same features that the other one did, plus it, it doesn't have a missing switch. So the old one is gonna be used for spare parts and the new one is going to be installed. So anyway, we're gonna try hooking up some of the wires to this thing and hopefully today you're gonna be able to see the car start. You're gonna be able to see me flip the lights on and off from this thing. And hopefully by the time everything is said and done in this video, this thing should be ready to drive with exception of bleeding the brakes because that's something that still needs to be done. But anyway, let's hop to it and just see what we can get done today. So likey, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle bells to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching. We'll be back right after the intro. Just using stock wires, I feeded them through the hole in the dash here. It's actually the radio hole, and I removed out the switch panel. Let me show you something, how simple this is, using just factory wiring without using this entire mess. Okay, for safety reasons, I always keep that battery disconnected because I just don't know what this thing is going to do until I finish going through it. I just don't want it starting a fire and burning itself or even my glorious pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> which as you probably know go up like confetti in a friggin bonfire but anyway these uh yeah battery's been reconnected so if we get back under the hood here and we pull on that light switch that circuit should be working and it should turn our headlights on well that was the theory <laughs> operating theory out the window you know what it might be because this wire is not connected down here somewhere Yep, that was it. There they are. There's our headlights. So that wire that I was just manipulating under there, that's the one we're gonna hook our switch and the switch panel to. That red wire that you see running through here with the black stripe is for the starter, so that'll go to the start button. And then this last red wire that's over here, this is a positive. This is what powers everything. So power in, this goes to the switch panel. All right, I'm trying to get into this thing here. I disconnected the battery before I got in here. They didn't want to unexpectedly blow any fuses or have any other problems. Got our new wiring panel right here. Woo! Whew. Boy, does that smell like Chinese rubber. Oh my god, that stinks. Woo! It's kind of like the smell that you get when you walk into Harbor Freight. That's probably the best way to explain it. Okay, looking at the back of the panel here, we have our power in. This is the power on switch right here. Doesn't matter which way the positive or the negative goes, but it's gonna be this one right here. I'm going to need a small jumper wire. It's actually gonna become a bus. That's gonna jump across everything. But before it goes to anything else, it needs to be intercepted by this relay. Okay, looking at this here. That's our positive. That's probably our negative. And then this is our switched leg. So what we'll do, is we'll put a couple connectors on the ends of this guy. Because if I'm not mistaken, 
These are screw type connectors, but they should take blade connectors just the same. Yeah, take the screws out. These suckers will slide on. Let's go ahead and uh, put some connectors on the ends here. Might want to cut these wires down and shorten them just for, for um, neatness reasons, but I don't think I'm going to go that overkill. And I usually like to solder these connectors on because it gives you the best connection. But I've had some pretty good luck with this crimping tool as I've been working on this here. There we go, good connection. All right. How I like to do these is I like to twist it and then fold it over once as that fills up the connector and makes it a good solid crimp when you bite it down because there's just that little bit of extra copper in there for it to bite onto. And it can't pull out straight because it's looped over itself. All right, one more here. Oops. There we go. As I said, twisty, twisty, fold it over once, and I really like that we're adding this relay in the circuit here. Just the fact that it came with a relay and I didn't have to replace all the switches individually, it just, it saved so much money. I mean, even if the thing's a piece of crap and I find myself replacing switches on it later on, it just makes more sense to do it the way that I just did. Okay, this positive, there's going to be a junction here. That's interesting, there's another leg on that. I wonder if this lights up too. It might. We'll have to check that out. Looks like there's a ground right here. I don't know what that's for, so we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, that positive is gonna go on there. Then we have our ground. Technically, this is gonna need to be grounded anyway, so that's what we're gonna attach to for the moment. And then, uh, you know, actually that is the ground. It is the ground and that's what we're going to use because this will literally be switched and screwed right into the dashboard so it'll be grounded out to the steel dash. Make sure the relay is plugged in properly. And then we have our positive right here which is switched off of that leg and they're going to go to our start button which appears to be... Ooh, this didn't come with instructions, did it? No, it did not. I'm gonna have to grab my multimeter and do a little bit of reverse engineering here because I can't tell a what's a what's a here. No, it's not obvious. All right. This switch appears to have an in, an out, and a ground because it's lit. So the positive will feed both the switch that goes to the out leg and the light which will then ground out so that needs to be hooked up properly which means I probably shouldn't have crimped that on yet I could have crimped two wires in there and run a ground back to the uh, switch panel here but the power wire is currently coming in through the bottom of this switch and once you turn this on I'm gonna turn it off for the moment it then sends power out to the light it sends power out to the start switch and off another leg to a relay so that relay becomes hot and that means that these switches are then powered by the relay. So this would turn on the running lights, this will do the headlights, and then the last one is an accessory that I haven't hooked up yet, that's why it's open. There's also a little piggy tail at the end. I mean, this was really simple stuff, not much to it at all. And jumping off of the uh, parking light, I also hooked up the gauge lights. So as soon as you turn on this one, the gauge light comes on as well. And that's that little skinny wire that's sitting right here, the gray with a red stripe. And, well, in theory, this should work. Let's just go ahead and push this thing back in the dash here. You know what I should do is I should just turn everything back off just in case it tries to ground out. There we go. All right, up under the hood here, I've got the headlights wired into the stock wiring harness. What was left of it? The plug, of course, was just missing. So I went ahead and just uh, 
<laughs> straightforward. High beams to low beams, low beams to high beams, ground to the ground. Uh, just in case you're curious, white is high, yellow is a typical low beam, and brown is ground. So that's what I did here. Uh, I then capped off any other wires, there's some other wires in here for running lights that weren't needed anymore, so I just simply wrapped them up and tucked them under. Now left and right sides are both connected to the same wiring harness on this side. Now again, why did I do that? It's technically really simple. These are LEDs, so they're very low amperage, so both can be combined to one fuse. Now, you do lose that redundancy, however. Let's say one of the lines does short out and pops a fuse, well, only one of your headlights would typically go out in a stock setup, but this, you'd lose them both. But again, rat rod, so this is perfectly okay. And that's the reason why we're gonna run at this, and, and I'm not gonna change it. Now, I could certainly change it if I wanted to. Come over here and just use the stock wiring harness. Um, for the uh, right hand side, which I just tucked up underneath, but there it is, everything's wrapped up all nice, no longer used, the plugs are all cut off, so I just packed them up and got them going nicely. All right, let's get this sucker mounted up in here. There are some holes drilled, oops, I went down there somewhere. <laughs> there are some holes drilled in the dash here somewhere. I'm hoping I can locate them. As soon as I find one, there's one. The rest should be easy to locate. There it is. Oh, Duckman, did you know you can strip out bolts with an impact? <laughs> Wouldn't believe the things that people tell me. Oh, Duckman. <laughs> Would you believe it if I told you that you could strip out bolts with a wrench too? <laughs> Much better. Now we have solid, solid mounted everything. All right, right here in the switch panel, we turn the power on, and then this should turn on the running lights. Let's go have a look at the tail lights, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what's going on back here. Here's our rear end. We got our tail lights nonsense on here, and I discovered that these tail lights don't match. Can you believe that? There's our running lights. You say, oh, that one's a ring, right? Yeah, it's kind of neat. This one's not. <laughs> and it's not that something's wrong with it, because when I connect the other wire to power, the center portion comes on separately. Hmm. Versus this one, when I connect the other light, it gets brighter. So essentially that's your, your brake light. But yeah, they're goofy and mismatched, but that's just the way they work. Um, we could probably get the right ones and make it match, but not my car, not my problem. Gives it character. Uh, yeah, that's true. It does have that. And being that this car is all kinds of wacky, maybe it's just better to leave it that way. It's four. The stock wiring harness is over here. Currently, the tail lights are connected to the stock wiring harness. These, I believe, are the turn signals and the um, light for the license plate light. So these are the wires that are going to be run into that for the tail lights on this. Since these are only two filament tail lights, that's right. They only have a low. <laughs> they only have a low and a high, and Beetles have three lights on each side. There's gonna to need to be a little logic circuit that's gonna sort those things out. And it's much similar to the five wire to four wire trailer conversion that you would put on a trailer. So if you needed to have that set up, and it's pretty much the same thing. And I'll wire that into the fuse box up front so everything is, um, essentially goes together. Hey, look at these tail lights. You'll notice that that one is on solid. All the lights are lit. This one's lit up in a ring. There's actually nothing wrong with these. They're just two different tail lights. They don't match. So I did a little research and I managed to track down that those are from a Harley Davidson, or at least they're retrofit Chinese uh, incandescent replacement LED panels. So each one of these is a little panel that can be replaced. Now I have already re rewired these and I hardwired them because the sockets that were in here were wired way too short. So when I just went to pull this out to do a diagnostic, I ended up ripping the wires out of the socket. So the socket is complete bullshit. We're not putting the socket back in there. I'm not going to bother with that. But All right, we well, a new set Amazon of these. saves the day. I got two new matching lights. I will put links down below in the video description if you're interested in these for your Harley Davidson or if you're going to be retrofitting your Volkswagen to use something a little bit different. 
The only gotcha on these is they are essentially dual filament bulbs. Now, as you know, with most vehicles that are destined for the European market, or ones that originate in the European market, typically turn signals, well, not only they flash a different color, but they are a separate filament altogether. So you have three filaments on each side. Turn signal indicators, marking lights, tail lights. These only have two, so how am I supposed to run that? Well, the interesting thing is, the Chinese turn signal switch that I found on the floor in this car, since this thing's missing a turn signal switch anyway, actually has provisions to make dual filament bulbs work, very similar to how trailer lights work, and I have actually used a trailer light adapter before to make things like this work on a motorcycle. So that way I can add running lights or something in there. And we'll get back to that because that subject's going to come back up. But in this case, all I have to do is get these things, uh, essentially, I might just snip them and rewire them into where they're supposed to be. But these sockets are completely unnecessary for me anymore. And no, I'm not going to replace the sockets because that was just utter bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's more money just to spend. I've already got this far anyway, so let's just get these things working. And in case you're curious, this is how the signals work. You know, it's only the center section is lighting up. It's nice and bright though. And over here on this side, the whole thing lights up, which means the tail light turns off, similar to how a trailer works. Anyway, the new set we got should resemble what's on this side. All right, I'm doing this with the power on on purpose. I need to be able to hook up each light to power to make sure that I could get the wiring pin out on them correct. Now the red light that's in here is the tail light. The blue light is stop and turn signal both and black is ground. I kept it nice and simple. This one, I don't know what the hell we've got on here. So we're going to do a little pin out and find out exactly what's supposed to go where. Now I wouldn't recommend this to everybody, but in the worst case here I'm probably just going to blow a, a um, fuse. All right, here we go. Let's strip it back. And we don't want to blow a fuse. Oh no, Dark Man, you shouldn't be doing this with the juice on. You're going to get shocked and you're going to electrocute yourself. Yeah, with 12 volts DC from a car battery, right? <laughs> All right, ground is going to be the case very clearly. Case here, looking at the light, let's see what we got. That's the ring, that's the center. Ooh, this actually is nice. It doesn't just light up the center, it lights up the whole damn thing. They're different than what I expected them to be. I don't mind that. Okay. So our tail light's the outer ring, which is on that pin. So whatever this pin is, I'll check continuity to these wires. Usually it's safe to assume that black is ground, but remember, Ford, Chevy, and uh, Mopar guys can't just assume that red is positive, because that's when they hook up the battery backwards, as you saw in the previous video. So we're not going to assume anything. These are Chinese made, of course. <laughs> All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Snip. Get these little wires. That was a lousy cutter. Lousy, lousy cutter. Strip this back. The great thing about LEDs, if you wire them backwards, they just don't work. Unless you do something really nasty, like put a really high reverse voltage on it. Come on, strip back, buddy. These wires are extremely thin and delicate. Can't be expecting too much from the Chinese market, especially not again on LEDs because they use so little power. All right, we got our wires snipped back here. Now, before I start putting anything together with any permanence, I'm going to put some shrink tubing over these. Just like that. So that way, when I get these sorted, all I've got to do is just pull it up and uh, heat it up. There we go. Okay, let's try the black one with the black one. Alright. Then. Red to red, maybe? No, it's orange, isn't it? Yeah, that's orange. Orange, that's the ring. Okay, we got lucky on the first try. 
That means the red one is our turn signal, or the bright one. Yep, there it is. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shrink this on here. I, I like to solder these typically, but I've noticed the shrink wrap is really good about holding these wires together. Before I go any further though, I'm going to shut off the power because I don't want to accidentally blow a fuse because and another fuse is just a pain in the ass to replace, so we're not going to do that. Okay, power is off. This is the orange one. Yeah, this shrink wrap is awesome. It pulls these wires so tight that I haven't been able to get them apart even by accident. I've noticed that using just a lighter well, it's not working too good out here anyway with all this wind. But using a lighter just doesn't seem to get them hot enough. Propane torch here really does the trick. Especially with the wind blowing like it is, I can actually turn it up a little bit. Shrinky, shrinky. Anybody remember the old shrinky dinks from the 70s and 80s? <laughs> shrinky dink. Oh, shrinks. Shrinks in the cold. Shrinky dinks actually shrunk in the heat. You put them in the oven. This stuff is great. Like I said, it takes a lot of heat to get it to shrink. There we go. And then that last wire that we didn't hook up yet is the blue one, which is going to go to our red one. This is our turn signal stoplight. Boy, these don't even work very good. There you go. These are tools that I inherited. Some of them are very likely older than I am. I'm guessing by the weight of these, um, I'm going to say that these are probably old. They don't look like you cheap stamped out um, crimpers actually have some weight. Of course, my name is already in there, and that's right. Glenn with two N's, you guys. For those of you that spelled my name wrong, Glenn has two N's, and Eleanor has three E's. Otherwise, you're talking about a Mustang. We don't talk about Mustangs on this channel. Am I right or am I right? Right, right, right. Okay. Wires... I like to do the little knotted twist. Not where you pull them together and you twist them up like you put a wire knot on them. These are the ones where you actually knot them together so they're lengthwise tied. I notice they hold a lot more strength. Also, things like shrink tubing fits over it a little bit better. All right, here we go. Yes, this does have an auto start on it, but it's worn out. <laughs> Oh, you fucker. I put too much heat on the damn wire and I've scorched it. It's like I did that on the orange one, too. That's all right. We're almost done. Come on, shrink, you fuck. There it goes. Shrink this end, too. Good. Done. Let's go ahead and give it a test. Put this all back into place. Just like that. And my lens is around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Thought I lost it. <laughs> all right. This has to go in with some force. Make it stay. Here's our tail light. Just confirming it did come on. Indeed, it did. We got a nice ring. Let's see if we get a turn signal. Oh, fantastic. And the ring stays lit, which is what I wanted. I did not want that tail light to go out completely. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side, installing the new piece. And uh, these tail lights are essentially going to be done once and for all. In this car we found, and the cover fell off of it, a cheap Chinese 
turn signal switch. Now the reason why the cover came off is actually because I opened it up because I wanted to see what the pinouts are and I wanted to try to um, reverse engineer it because I didn't think I was going to find any instructions on how this thing works. Well, actually I went online and I found a wonderful wiring schematic. I didn't think I would find it. I really honestly didn't. But apparently these things are sold a lot all over like yeah, Amazon and eBay. And uh, they're all made by or claim to be made by different companies, but they all work the same way. So I didn't need that all together. So there it is, wire screws, everything cover. I'm gonna put that back together. And then it actually attaches to the uh, steering column here with just a hose clamp. You know, cheap, totally cheap Chinese, but you know what? Perfect for this car because the original German parts aren't there and the wiring harness was all the plugs cut off of it anyway. So none of that matters anymore. All right, well, we're gonna get the sucker hooked up. Um, all these rainbow wires, is really what needs to be sorted out. Some of these turn out to be pretty easy and uh, kind of match the Bosch wiring harness in here, like green, for example, was also green on the, on the Beetle. So we're gonna hook this up to the stock wiring harness and get it working. And then we're gonna run through the turn signals and see if we can get the rest of them going. There's a lot of little finicky things and adapters and stuff that I need to hook into the system to make it work because this, of course, is a rat rod and does not have stock lighting on it anymore. It has LEDs throughout. And LEDs also means it's lower amperage, low, low draw, so I can double things up on single fuses without having to worry too much about uh, things popping. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I've got some turn signals here wired into the stock wiring harness. I put one on each side. These are from a buggy. Uh, I should say they're for a buggy. It's uh, just universal bug pack turn signals. I installed one over on this side too. No, it's not flashing because the four ways aren't on. But in order to make this thing US compliant, it has to have some running lights as well. It's a single filament bulb, and how else would you do it? Now I would imagine you could probably run your turn signal light right into the running light, right? And just have it flash this, the, the voltage into a light that's already lit, but what's that going to do? Probably nothing. <laughs> it might even cause your electrical system to backfeed a little bit, and that's not usually a good idea. Now I imagine you could put your running light on a resistor and dim the bulb, and then when a turn signal lights up, it'll be brighter, and, and I have done that before, and you can throw a diode in there if you're worried about some backfeeding. But the best way to do it in walks Amazon yet again, and this is what I mentioned before, Boop. about a trailer light adapter. This is a three into two trailer light adapter here in this little baggie. Guess I'm gonna need two hands to get it out of there. And what it does is it takes your turn and stop signals, three signals in and two signals out, one for each side. We're not going to use a stop signal in this case. We're just going to use a running light signal. And this little box handles the logic to sort out what sides are supposed to be lit and when. Real simple to hook up because the Chinese turn signal that I wired up in there it has a wiring diagram, which we showed earlier in the video. But we're simply going to uh, cut into a couple of those connections. And instead of stop, we'll just hook it to the running lights that normally sit on top of the fenders. So we'll find that wire, trace it in, and just get it wired in, which looks like it's going to be the red one. Not much to this. Real simple stuff, guys. Ow, fucker. All right, we're ready to do our wiring down here. To be determined, the, uh, all the right-hand side stuff actually happens to be green. So coming from our turn signal switch to our right-hand in on here, we're going to need to connect these two wires. I'm going to have to strip this one back just a little bit. Put a piece of shrink on there. It's nice to see that uh, all these green wires are actually the ones that go together. The Volkswagen wire is black with a green stripe, the Chinese wire is green, and the wire in the trailer adapter is green. And that makes things a little bit easier to remember. All right, we got our shrink tubing on there. We're gonna twist these wires together. Yes, currently everything is powered off. I do recommend, if you're working on this stuff and you don't know what you're doing, just disconnect your battery. Alright, that should get us bundled on here. This is that twist that I was telling you about before. Twist them two wires together. It's almost like they're knotted, and then when you 
slide the shrink tubing over it, it's a much nicer, cleaner appearance. All right, our yellow is our left turn signal in, and this is kind of nice once again that uh, it matches the Chinese harness. And the harness coming from that Chinese switch just coincidentally has the same color. I can dig that. Yeah. Can you dig it? I dig it. Slide this on here. That one's ready to be shrunk. All right, now we have our outputs. The output, right hand green. Sounds like we're playing a twister here. Right hand green. Moving on this wire. Our greens go together just like this. And then the shrink tubing goes over that. One more left, our yellow, which is our left hand stop, our left hand turn signal on the bottom there. The yellow one, the yellow one connects to the white one on the Volkswagen harness, but not until after we shrink tube it. So we're gonna properly shrink tube everything and make it nice and pretty and not have problems with short circuits or other freaking problems that are just gonna burn stuff up and start fires and disasters and all that awful crap. All right, that's all good. Last one that's left is the stop wire. This is our input. This is gonna connect to our parking lights because we're actually misusing this adapter. But in our case, what we need to do is pick up the parking light or tail light circuit, which I believe is a, usually a gray wire on the Volkswagen. So we're gonna have a look at our wiring harness. In fact, I think I see it already. I think it's, I think it's this one right here. And this circuit is fuse protected. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna nick this wire and put a little, uh, little splice in it and connect our red one to our gray one. That's kind of funny, that was my high school colors, red and gray. We'll connect those two together. All right, there's our hookup. We're just gonna take this little guy, slide him over there, and then we're gonna heat shrink him on. Okay, we're under here, we got all of our shrink tubing all shrunk up. Uh, this is before I even tested it, which is probably really foolish, but I'm confident that I know what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and start testing some stuff. All right. Okay, the first thing we need to do is turn on our ignition, turn on our running lights. Let's have a look around the back. All right, we've got our ring on that side lit up. Check it out. Over on the other side, same thing. We should have running lights on up front. Here's one. And the other one on this side. Excellent. They're working the way they're supposed to. Now, let's turn the turn signal on to the left. We have a flashing marker light. Check that out. I probably should upgrade the bulb in there. I think it's a 194. I could put a 168 in that. It'll be nice and bright. Over here, we should have a left-hand turn signal. We do. This one should not be flashing, nor should the one up front. No flashing. Working like it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and try the other side. All right. It went out over there. It went out over here. We're now flashing on this side, and we're now flashing up front here. So how about that? That stupid little trailer adapter right there does that little trickery, makes everything work. And by the way, they're only like $15. That little stupid box is only 15 bucks. Simple as that. They don't recommend using it with LED lights. These are not LEDs. Those are typical incandescent bulbs, despite the ones on the rear here being LED. But these are not in that circuit. So these are separate. Yes. Turn that back off. Good. Still on. Still on. On solid. And on solid up front. Great. One last thing. Let's turn it back off. Make sure they stay off. <laughs> We're off. Off here. Off there. And off up there. And now, with that turned off, let's do a left-hand turn signal. Left signal's on. Here we go. One in the back here should be on. The ring is now off, as you can see. 
off here and off there. This is correct. One more test and that's for the right hand side. Right hand side should be off here. It's off up there. Should be flashing here and flashing up front. Here we go. Turn signals are finished. Another step done. Far out. Here's a sample of our lights. We got both headlights. Running light. Running light. Going around the back. We got a tail light. We got another tail light. Both tail lights. Here's our running light again. Headlight. Check it out. Excellent. Everything's working. Yeah, and I figure I can peel and stick that. Put it down below here where it's out of the way. Get all them wires tucked nicely. But that'll stop the hinges from hitting it, and if you had to remove the gas tank, you won't have to worry about taking it out of the way. So, I think that'll work. That's where I'm gonna put them, right under there. All right, we've gotta pick up a brake light signal from somewhere. I believe these black wires with a red stripe are coming from the uh, are coming from the brake light switch down below. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into there. We're going to ground out our test light on something that's grounded. That ought to work just fine. And then we'll see if that comes on when I step on the brakes. Nope. I have to have our power on, of course. Boop. And we should be able to see test light from here, my foot on the brake, there you go, we got light. Okay, so that's where I want to connect the uh, Chinese turn signal switch to the brake light signal. I just simply removed a wire from here and ran a new wire, just leftover crap wire, up into the Chinese turn signal. Well, the brake lights appear to be working just fine, but when in conjunction with turn signals, some weird stuff is starting to happen here. I'm gonna have to reevaluate. I think this Chinese turn signal switch is not doing quite what it's supposed to. I may have to add a diode or a dropping resistor somewhere in the line, but with a little diagnostic, I should be able to get that thing fixed and figured out in the next go around. Something smells like licorice. I don't smell licorice. It's weird. No. Hmm. Nope. You can see it's gone now. I wonder if someone's got a vape or something. I smell Volkswagen. What's funny is even the outside of the car smells like it. <laughs> it's from the uh, the coconut fibers that are in the seats. When they get old, they have that musty kind of smell. And also the battery being in the vehicle releases gases too, so it gives it that unique Volkswagen smell. So that smell you smelled when you sat in there, all Volkswagen smell like that. And your gear probably will too. Well, maybe not. You don't have the stock seats in there. So you probably won't have all that smell. Possibly not. Some people actually gut the seats of that fiber and then they make some pillows. Oh. And then they throw the pillows on the back seat so that way the car has a smell. Okay. <laughs> that unique Volkswagen smell. Uniqueef. Uniqueef. There we go. Look at that. Wiring nightmare. I can't see them, they're in the shade. Yay. Is that your baby? Could be. <laughs> That's a lot of copper. Man, what a mess. Well, that's about all I got. I got a couple little things to sort out in the brake light turn signal circuits in the rear. I need to get a horn hooked up to this thing, and then we're gonna get the engine running. Now, this video has been released out of order, which means you may have already seen that happen. <laughs> if you did, hey, thanks for watching so much, you guys. I appreciate all your support. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. So licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingo belly so you get updates every time I upload the video. Check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links and all the different places to see me and the other things that I'm working on. Or whatever it is that B's doing, you can find it there just the same. Thanks, everyone. Until then, we'll see you next time.